Hey everyone, Teddy Baldessar here. In this video, we're gonna be looking at mainstream brands. What is the offering from those brands that is going to be the most attainable from a price perspective? and kind of just share some thoughts about those pieces. I'm predominantly going to be looking at mechanical watches unless the course version is so much of an anomaly that it just makes way more sense. And before we jump into this video, say you want some more attainable options, some affordable options, check out our latest blog, looking at some of the best options for under $1,000. Over 40 watches mentioned, looking at a variety of brands and types of watches, so you have something perfect for you. Definitely go check that out. Link will be in the description down below. Now to begin here, let's talk about the big boy in the room, and that is going to be Rolex. Now, I am reluctant to mention them right at the beginning, but I just kinda wanna just mention it, of course, address it. But Rolex with the Oyster Perpetual is going to be the option here. I think the obvious baggage is going to be the fact that these have become even difficult to get, the most entry-level option, which I think is just straight madness, but it is the unfortunate reality of Rolex at the moment. But these watches, when being found around retail price, are fantastic watches. There's no question about it, almost setting the standard for what it really takes to be a watch in this $5,000, $6,000 range. But unfortunately, it has become more than that. You're getting the 3230 inside, latest generation of movements with extended power reserve, 100 meters of water resistance, so you're completely covered there, iconic oyster case and bracelet, variety of different dial colors to choose from, as well as case sizes. There's just a lot to like about these watches, and that has created the unfortunate reality that there is now something to unlike about them, which is their own popularity. It kind of is a double-edged sword in a way. But these remain the most attainable watches that you can get from Rolex at retail. So going from Rolex to their sister brand in Tudor, here we're going to be looking at the Tudor 1926. And this is a completely overlooked watch, so many of the aspects that I was mentioning with the Oyster Perpetual are not going to be here, but a lot of the same function is going to remain here. This is gonna come in a variety of different dial colors, case sizes. It's gonna lean into a little bit more of some vintage dynamics, depending on which one you go for. There are gonna be some that are bedazzled with diamonds, which, hey, you know, do you, whatever you feel. But my favorite is going to be the white opaline dial with blue markers. This one just pops. I think it's very versatile. It looks great. It has a bit more of some modern undertones to it compared to the rest of the offering, in my opinion. You're getting 100 meters of water resistance, reliable movement on the inside, sapphire crystal, great wearing dimensions, also being very thin at 9.5 millimeters in thickness. And probably the best part about it is this is going to be under $2,000 at retail to get into the brand Tudor, which I think is a fantastic position for value. If you are somebody that maybe is just a little fatigued with the Black Bay, wants something that is incredibly versatile, could be worn in a variety of different situations. And the Tudor 1926, although probably not as beloved as some other models from Tudor, of course, still is every bit as versatile. Now for our next brand, we have Breitling. And when looking at Breitling, they do have some quartz variants and just parts of their catalog that do undercut with the price we're gonna be looking at here. But just to keep things all mechanical as much as we can, going to be looking at the Breitling Super Ocean Collection, looking at the 36 millimeter options. Now these are available in a variety of different colors. That flexibility is going to allow these to be worn on both men and women's wrists. They are a bit to the smaller end. They're gonna wear like a 36, 37 millimeter case. So just keep that in mind. But the Super Ocean range, whether you're talking about the Heritage, the 57 or these, I think they're probably some of the most overlooked dive watches in the luxury segment. These falling between around 35, $3,600 and $4,100, depending on the variant and strap option. I think pack's still a pretty decent offering. Pre-owned, you can find these for some pretty nice deals as well. Automatic ETA 2824 on the inside, so that's really where you're going to be getting some additional benefit to the cost there and saving some money. But a simple no-nonsense dive watch from a line that has some great history and one that is incredibly overlooked. For our next luxury brand, we have IWC with their Mark 8. Now, IWC is a brand I believe almost sets the standard for that entry door into high-end pilot Flieger style watches from that luxury segment. These are gonna come in with a price just north of $4,000 if you're going to go for the strap option. The bracelet option is going to be a little bit more expensive. I think the common criticism on these is the use of a base SW300 movement, which I personally get pretty fatigued with. I don't see that as a deal breaker at all for these watches. They're absolutely the best of this design style while also remaining true to the rich history that this brand has. This watch has its heritage stemming back decades, probably the closest in terms of design coming from the Mark 11 that was released in the late 1940s. And IWC, of course, being one of the leading brands when it comes to developing Flieger style watches during World War II. I almost see this as the everyday equivalent to the Rolex Explorer for those that have a love for all things aviation. Now for our next luxury brand, we have Omega. 
And I know when many people consider Omega, they may think of the Seamaster collection, maybe the Speedmasters, but what I'm pretty sure no one probably considers first, or very few do at least, is the Omega DeVille collection. But that's what we're looking at when we're talking about the entry level door for Omega with the Omega DeVille Prestige. So I actually have a full video on this watch talking about it as the most entry level or attainable modern Omega watch. And although from a design perspective, it is pretty plain Jane in terms of what it's going for, classic dress watch on the front, it still does its job very well. And in terms of the price range that it's occupying, probably one of the best examples of a dress watch in this category. It is available in multiple sizes. I looked at the 36.8 millimeter option, which is a pretty good middle of the road type of dress watch from a classic wearing dimension standpoint. Gonna wear pretty true to that as well. It comes with an automatic coaxial movement. This one is going to be the 2500s. The 2500 calibers were the first mass adopted calibers from Omega to utilize the coaxial escapement from Dr. George Daniels and really paved the way for what we see now from pretty much everything from the Speedmaster, Seamaster, Globemaster, all featuring a coaxial movement inside. The JLC Reverso collection is probably one of the more challenging to get a grip on as a newcomer to watches, just because there are, of course, so many different variants to choose from. While when you're dealing with a rectangular watch, it also creates some complexity of knowing the difference between the wearing dimensions of the pieces. But when you're talking about the most attainable watches from JLC, I think some people are probably questioning, wow, a Reverso is the most attainable way. And with the kind of revamp of the master control date being a little bit more expensive, the most attainable way to get into JLC as a brand is through the Reverso collection with the Reverso Classic Mono Face or Small Seconds. Now these two watches are going to vary in terms of price a little bit around $500, but with $6,000 retail, you can get a manual wound caliber with the JLC 822 on the inside with some pretty solid regular wearing dimensions from the Reverso family. Now it is important to note that you can get some quartz options as well for pretty significantly cheaper, but that just did not feel appropriate when looking at a brand like JLC that is just so known for their movement manufacturing. To go for a quartz movement just seemed like it was not appropriate at all. I think you have to lean on what the competency of a manufacturer is. And when you're talking about JLC, their movements are what they are known for at the end of the day and, and pretty much producing them for every brand for the likes of Patek Philippe, Vacheron and many others. JLC has been there providing those movements. And that's why I think these are probably going to be the most appropriate here. These marry a lot of the elements of the classic designs, but aren't so much on the nose to the original 1931 options. These have been long standing in the collection and for good reason. They're simple, they're beautiful, elegant, and still comes with that wow factor when you twist this case around within its chassis. For our final luxury brand, we have Grand Seiko. And I'm looking at this from two different angles. For one direction, we have their manual calibers. And the other direction, for those that just want the epitome of what I would say is being offered by Grand Seiko and their most prized proprietary technology with the spring drive on the other end. First, looking at the manual caliber options, we have the SBGW231. This is the classic looking dress watch from Grand Seiko. Manual wound caliber on the inside with the 9S64 movement. Those movements also operate at plus five to minus three seconds per day. So still getting some pretty good accuracy there. Not nearly to the level of the spring drive, but that's a totally different equation. And with this configuration, there were three new variants released as limited editions with the green dials. This is just kind of more recent news in the past month or so, but they come in this traditional dial format, classic dress watch, classic elegance, and probably the best epitome of it from Grand Seiko. But then when you get into the other side of the aisle with the spring drive, a lot of people think that you have to spend over $5,000 to get into a Grand Seiko spring drive, but that is actually not true. You can get into it at a pretty reasonable price, all things considered, with the SBGA 283 and 285. So currently speaking, these are the most attainable spring drive watches that you are going to be able to get. They both come with the 9R65 movement on the inside. Really where you're sacrificing with these watches is with the dials. They're a bit more straightforward. They don't have those te crazy texturized surfaces that come with other collections like the Four Seasons collections or with say the Snowflake, of course. But to get into these watches for south of $4,000 with the 9R65 spring drive movement, an incredible feat 
and watchmaking, if you've not seen my video looking at how the spring drive works and what really goes into it, I would certainly recommend checking that out. It's one of my favorite videos that I've ever done, but getting all that in this package is quite good. You can for a little bit more start getting into some more, I would say refined pieces, but the Zeratsu polishing is all there, 100 meters of water resistance, pretty wearable cases too, both from the case size as well as thickness department, which is great. 100 meters of water resistance brings a lot of the added benefits that come with getting into these watches while of course coming with that beloved spring drive. But all right guys, that is my list of looking at some attainable watches from luxury brands, or at least the most attainable. I probably shouldn't rush the gun and say that because these still are luxury products at the end of the day. But if you guys found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. That's a great indicator. It will help me know if you guys wanna see another one of these in the future. So would appreciate that. Also be sure to go check out that blog, looking at some of the best watches under $1,000, have over 40 watches mentioned. Check out teddybaldestar.com as well, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. We also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we carry. So if something goes wrong, you're not having to pay the bill for it. These things can get expensive. You don't want to have to worry about that. You want to enjoy your watch. Also nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back into the content that we're creating, trying to foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. Follow on Instagram if you want to see some cool photos of watches and stay up to date with the content. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.